In this video, I'm going to show how easy it is to create designs like these just by using the star tool and stroke. To start with, I need a star. So let's just draw a star. And I need the stroke, but no fill. And if I look in the lower left, I can see fill is turned on and stroke is turned on. So I'm just going to click on the color of the fill here. And it actually opens the fill and stroke options straight at fill. If I click on the X, it turns the fill off. And this thin black line will actually be your card stock when you cut this out. So it needs to be a little bit thicker. I'll come along to stroke style and increase the width. I've actually got mine set on millimeters. If you've got yours set on inches, you might need to change it. Because as I increase and decrease, the very large steps. So you can either change it to PX, which is pixels, or to millimeters, and you can change it in smaller increments. So just close this box for the time being. I'm just going to double click on the star to get these two nodes up and start moving them. Now I'm getting different looks here, but not the ones I want. I want this to look very round. So I'll come up to here to rounded and start increasing the number. And just start dragging the node around. Every time I get a design I like, I duplicate it and just move it aside. It is much easier to delete an unwanted design later than it is to try and recreate an earlier design. So I just might change the corners. Start moving the nodes around. Grab either one. Make it even rounder. You can see this is a 12 by 12 box behind me and I'm going bigger. I don't worry about that at the moment. I just create the designs and then I change the size later on. I might duplicate that one. Change the spoke ratio here. A few more corners. At the moment, I'm working in a small area and my line's looking too thick. So it's easy enough to just come along and make it thinner. I'm not looking at the width of it for cutting. It's more just for design purposes. Now I quite like that, but this is a little bit wrong. So I can just change rounded. With that node, I'm just moving it in a little bit. Might duplicate that one. Let's just make one more. Might bring this down to a low number. This time I just might make it a little bit thicker. Might just reduce the rounded down. I'm just trying to tidy up the outside perimeter. And as you can see, that just gives a softer look. So I might make that the final one to save. What I do now is make this a size I think I'm going to be cutting it. So I'm going to close the padlock. Then I've only got to change the height or the width and the other one will stay in proportion. I might make this four inches and I like to view it at 100%. So down in the lower right tells you the zoom percentage. So I'm just going to type 100, press enter on my keyboard. That is the size it's going to cut out. So looking on it, it's going to cut thick enough and there's no little tiny bits that need tidying up. To finalize the design, I just go path, stroke to path. Double click now and you can see I've got all the nodes. So put that one aside, move to the next one. Let's make this one six inches. Now this time I might decide I don't really want that circle in the center. So I'll go path, stroke to path. Now if I double click on it, just drag the mass around all those nodes I want to remove, press delete. And that's another design ready for cutting out. Move along to the next one. That's set at five inches. I'm gonna zoom this at 100% because it looks like that could be a bit thin. 
No, we've got these little tiny bits in the middle. Depending on the design I'm trying to achieve, I do do it two different ways. I'll just duplicate it and show you both ways. So the first one, I'll go path, stroke to path, just like before, and then I'll come in and I'll delete all these nodes. So now all those nodes are deleted, that one's ready for cutting. This one I'm going to do a little bit different. I'm just going to make the width a little bit thicker. You can see they've now disappeared. And I'll go path, stroke to path to finalise it. For the final one I'm going to do a little bit different. If I happen to like the shape of that, but I don't actually want to cut it out with all these little pieces, I'll go path, stroke to path. This time I want this to be solid. I find the easiest way to fill that is to go path, break apart. While all parts are selected, go path, union. Double click, you can see that's now one piece. I also like to use these as cutouts on cards. I might just try it with this one. Just duplicate it. I always duplicate so I can keep the original. I'm going to go path, break apart. I'm going to very carefully grab the edge and drag it away. If you ever have trouble dragging it away, I recommend you just drag the mouse over some of the parts and just select any colour whatsoever. You can then see much easier the part you want to move. Just make this one colour. Now with this, it can now be used as a stencil. If I don't like parts, I can just come along and remove them. So when I finalise my design, I just drag the mouse around them so all parts are selected. Go path, union. That will now act as one piece. So if I wanted to put this on a card, just move all of them out of the way. Draw my card. I'm just changing the colour to make it easy for you to see. I'll bring this over. Now it's, it's behind and I can't see it, so I'll just raise it to the surface. Select both parts. I just want to align it in the middle. So I've just aligned it in the middle. While both parts are still selected, I'll go path, difference. Let's just make it darker. As you can see, I've quite easily changed that design to be a cutout on a card. If you would like to see even more ideas on how you can use Inkscape to help design files for your cutter, please visit my blog at cuttingtime.blogspot.com. Thank you.